Hey, River of Life family. Hey, just wanted to give you guys a quick update. We are uh, rapidly approaching the close of 2020. Woohoo! And 2021 is coming, ready or not. We're less than six weeks away. And uh, so, just got a few things I wanted to talk about. Why don't we talk about COVID first? Uh, real quick, we do have some uh, new guidelines from the governor. They don't really affect us too much. We're still at 50% capacity up to a maximum of 100, which is not much too much of an issue for our congregation. We have two services going so we can accommodate our congregation just fine and we have plenty of space, keep our distance and, uh, and all that. Um, you know, obviously there appears that there's a little bit of a rise going on right now. It was probably somewhat expected as the colder weather comes in, people spend less time outdoors, more time indoors. Uh, COVID does tend to transmit when you're indoors in close contact for an extended period of time. And uh, so we obviously, we certainly want to continue to be diligent. So far, we thank God. We are very thankful that uh, we're not aware of anybody within the River of Life family contracting uh, COVID at this point. And we certainly want to uh, keep that record going, if at all possible. So, but it, you know, in light of that, it is, I think, also important just to be honest and um, recognize that certainly, you know, in-person church gatherings uh, do fall under sort of higher risk activities. And so we certainly want to, again, minimize uh, any uh, potential spread. So uh, keeping a little extra physical distance is a good idea. And we have plenty of room in our new facilities to do that very easily. Uh, we do have a brand new uh, HVAC system, and these systems are actually designed to try to minimize things like the spread of colds and flus, and that would include coronaviruses, and it, it operates you know, through the airflow uh, you know, coming down towards the ground, and then it moves air outside, brings some fresh air in, and so things that come out of the mouth will tend to come out and go down and be moved out, fresh air coming in. So we do have good ventilation, and uh, you know, certainly if you're going to be in close contact, uh, you know, wearing a mask may be helpful. Uh, we do uh, have our greeters and our ushers and our prayer team. Anybody who's going to be a, in close contact is wearing a mask. We certainly recommend and others to do that if you, if you can't keep a appropriate physical distance. All that. And, uh, you know, there are, you know, there are, um, there are some good news in terms of even though the, the uh, cases are starting to you know rise right now, it looks like things like the death rate are still quite low. So the fatality rate on COVID is much much lower than originally anticipated, and that that trend is continuing. So that's good news. It does seem that uh, the kids are really not affected by this. There's a fascinating study being done right now. Uh, by Emily Oster, who is a professor at Brown University. She started it, uh, like I think in August, as schools were getting ready to reopen. And she's been working with schools across the country. I believe she has 6,000 schools signed up where they're kind of tracking data. And they're basically finding so far, uh, it's not conclusive, but so far the data is indicating that again, COVID does not seem to be impacting the kids very much. And the kids are not really big spreaders. Where the risk in schools really lies is adult to adult transmission. And so for teachers who are, who are in higher risk categories, that's where uh, the focus really needs to be. But I thought that was interesting. And again, you know, maybe encouraging for, um, for parents. Um, and so I say all that, you know, we do want to continue to be diligent and, I, you know, and everybody has to make their own decision about the kinds of risks they're willing to take and the kinds of risks they're not willing to take. And we really do respect each person's ability to be able to do that. You know, I tend to, you know, for me personally, I would much rather uh, take a little additional risk and be able to continue gathering and, you know, and being able to have interactions with, with people. Uh, that's my personality. That's my risk tolerance. And, uh, you know, personally, I would just rather, uh, not that I want to get COVID, but I'd rather get it and fight through it than not be able to have any kind of interaction. That's just a personal decision for me. Um, but I'm not implying I want it. I don't. Um, but I don't obviously expect everybody else to have that exact same, you know, attitude. I, you know, obviously every person has to make their own decision on what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, what kind of risk do you want to take and don't want to take. And the one thing we absolutely want to make sure is that for those of our members who are uh, taking a little extra caution and joining us online instead of in person, we want you to know how much we love you, how appreciative we are of you, and how much you are every single bit a part of this church family and this church community. And if there is anything that we can do 
uh, better, to, um, you know, to, to help you feel more connected or to serve you uh, better during this time. We would love to be able to hear from you. We'd love to hear that feedback because that's what we really want to be able to do. And obviously this has been a very challenging year uh, in so many different ways and uh, you know people who have been impacted uh, economically, financially or at work, you know if there's people who have had loved ones who've gotten sick or or uh, passed away um, and certainly you know even just you know the, the, the disruption to our normal lives, the disruption to our social interactions and you know, that really does take a toll uh, over time. And so it's been a very challenging year. Uh, you know, I have personally found it very challenging, just all the adjustments that we've had to make as a church and trying to manage all that. And then I'm a people person. I need to be around people and not being able to see, you know, you know many people that I would normally see or many of the people within our, within our church family. You know, that's just, that's just hard. But despite these strange times it's also been an incredibly fruitful season for us as a church family and uh, God has added to our numbers we've seen people come to faith we've been we've still been doing baptisms we've had new members quite a few of them just even re uh, recently and so we continue to grow during this time uh, some of our small groups are just doing phenomenal you know and there's uh, you know, the, the, uh, the ladies group has been just having some fantastic meetings and they're thriving as a group. A new men's group has started and uh, the, the um, our young adult group is just, you know, like off the charts. They're, they're growing numerically, more importantly, they're growing spiritually. They're just awakening. They're alive. It's full of life and it's just, it's just awesome. We continue a lot of our ministries to serve the community. Grief Share, uh, Savignon's going to be starting up pretty soon. We've had some incredible nights of worship and prayer. I mean, off the charts times. Uh, we had Dennis Kramer come. He actually uh, came twice at his own request. And it was amazing uh, times of ministry and the release of the prophetic word. And some lives were dramatically touched during that time. Just incredible. And, uh, you know, overall, we really are seeing a, uh, a wonderful move of the Holy Spirit right now that is reviving and awakening, and uh, it really is incredible. And I just encourage you just to, you know, I want you to be aware of it, but also just seek it for yourself as well. Uh, know that God really is here. He's real. And he is doing wonderful things in our midst. And so now more than ever is the time to kind of, you know, maybe a little less of what is, you know, getting your feedback from what is from, from the world, so to speak, and a little more attention to what the Spirit of God is doing in our midst. And we have lots of opportunities moving forward, and uh, we could really use your help. You know, we are absolutely going to see, I think, it, uh, we're already seeing it, but we're going to see it, I think, a lot more people just hungry for the presence of God and the real deal. I think we're going to see more repentance. Um, you know, I think there's going to be a, a desire for, you know, genuine community, genuine unity, especially uh, in, given how divided our country is and given all the isolation that has taken place right now. You know, at some point, people are going to be longing for that. We have an opportunity to show them what it's like for real community in the presence of God and what real unity in the Spirit looks like. Um, you know, it was kind of disappointing to to finish our building, <laughs> be able to use it for a couple of months during the lockdown and you know we're glad that we are back in and being able to use it if we can't use it to the full extent we'd like to see it used. Um, but you know there's lots of vision for the you know for uh, future expansion and uh, you know so we, we, a lot of things outdoors, we want to do some outdoor seating so we can do outdoor gatherings, we want to have a prayer garden outside. Uh, eventually we're going to have a 500 person sanctuary but when the time comes when that's appropriate and growth warrants it. But in the meantime, we had this amazing space. We'd love to turn it into kind of an activity center, if you will, like a gym. Um, so lots of good things that we can do to expand. And so we could really use your help for the opportunities that are going to be coming our way uh, in the future. And uh, we could certainly use your financial support. And we are so grateful. We really are grateful. We have amazing members who are generous and faithful in their giving 
And uh, your, your faithfulness and your generosity allows us first to be here, but not just to be here, but to be able to preach the gospel, to be able to minister and touch lives, to, have, you know, to see a community raised up in this area, and that's because of your support. And uh, you know, if you're a member or a regular tender, just you know, haven't sort of taken that step of faith yet to see what it's like, uh, to enter into, you know, regular, faithful, sacrificial giving to support the local church. I just want to encourage you to be able to do that. We'll be talking about more of that in the, in the future, just why it's so important and, and, uh, and what it will do for your own, you know, spiritual growth. God loves the church and uh, it really is one of the first and most important steps in a Christian's life is to learn what it's like to give sacrificially to support the church and the work of the gospel. And uh, it's one of the few areas in Scripture where God actually says we can begin to test Him in this area and see if He won't pour out uh, a blessing when we do that. And so there's a very neat dynamic that happens when you begin to step into that. And uh, so we just want to encourage you to be able to do that. We could really use some help in serving some of our ministries. Our, our children's church can really use some help. Or, you know, worship team, sound, media, some of these areas. Uh, you know, if you've got gifts or interest in those areas, if you're willing to serve, if you haven't discovered the joy of, uh, of serving in that way, we just want to encourage you to do that. We could certainly use, you know, the, in the days that come, we're going to need more leaders. We're going to need people who are willing to disciple other people. So, you know, uh, this next generation as well as new believers. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, we are this Sunday, November 22nd. We're going to just give a quick uh, financial update. Joel. Fontanella, our uh, corporate secretary treasurer, is going to just kind of talk about the first 10 months and how it's going compared to last year and we'll talk a little bit about the building project and where that stands as well. So just want to encourage you, if you can, to come out this Sunday for that. And the last thing is um, October was Pastor Appreciation Month and uh, we got a lot of appreciation and love. Just wanted to thank you and acknowledge that. Got uh, notes and cards and new gifts and even some financial contributions and our uh, it all meant a lot to all of us, and so we just want you to know that our staff and us, we do feel appreciated, and we want you to know how much we appreciate you. You all are a real gift, and it really is, uh, not only is it an honor and a privilege, it's a lot of fun to be part of this church family who is just learning to uh, love God and love one another and share that love with others. So God bless you. In the name of Jesus, we love you each very dearly. There's something in the water must have brought me back, it brought me back, it brought me back to life.